Samira Mači Apolo na mala pota. Le i juhan u hipi kim vašte. Mi tako e pikim pa in ređe taha polo. Mona hum o wawa. What I'm speaking to you now is an indigenous language. We have to remember that English is a foreign language. And I think everybody in here who is from the US or whatever, you should get a foreign language credit for studying English because it's not from here, it's from England. Same thing with Spanish. Spanish is a foreign language not because it's from Mexico, but because it came with the conquistadors in, uh, into Mexico, but it's now considered Mexico. Um, the title, I just thought, was to the point of what I'm gonna talk about. Um, Native Americans are at the top and the bottom of most social statistics, and I'll get into that. So when we talk to scientists, and we talk to people who conduct social studies, and we're not included, they go, oh yeah, and Native Americans too. We're left out of the conversation, so that's why it's the erasure and cancellation of the first peoples in the American discourse. And that means uh, in, at universities, in your office. How many of you have been in an office and somebody says, yeah, we're gonna go have a powwow? Yeah, exactly. People know that, but that's not what that is. It actually diminishes what a powwow is. A powwow, actually the language, the word itself originated out here. This is my first time in Rhode Island. The word powwow is, is, is I think it's a Narragansett. And so what we did in a powwow is we celebrated, uh, let's say, a victory in a battle. We celebrated a, um, a hunt. Uh, that's a powwow. It was a celebration of our culture. Maybe somebody we lost, somebody got wounded, things like that. It's not, it's not a meeting in, in, in a conference room, okay? It's, that's not what that is, so please try to kick that out of your, your, uh, your language. So, let's do an exercise. Google African American. And you see this, modern people. You see the Obamas, you see an astronaut. You see modern human people, right? Let's do another one. Google Asian Americans, modern. 21st century, maybe 20th century, but very fucking modern. <laughs> Sorry, I do cuss. <laughs> Latino Americans, now we got some black and white photos, but 20th century, 21st century, modern people. Very fucking modern. There's mine. Native Americans, what's the first thing that comes up in the first Google search? way back in the 1800s, not modern people. But we use language interchangeably. Some people say Native Americans, some say American Indians. And I said, all right, let's do it. Shit. Again, again, look at the images. It's everything everybody loves about the romanticization of us. Like they want to, there's like some romantic idea of indigenous peoples. We've got the feather headdresses, we've got the braids. The only modern photo we have right now is this one, this kind of grainy modern day powwow. And to give you an idea, that is who we are. You will still see us doing these things at our, at our ceremonies, at our powwows. You still see natives with long hair. I myself will let my hair grow and then I cut it. I let it grow and then I cut it. It's just what I do, it's my style. But these are black and white images. These are images of the Plains Indian, okay? So this is still an idea when people say, what is it, you know, you don't look Native American. And that is the whole Elizabeth Warren high cheekbone shit. Okay, high cheekbone doesn't make you Native American. Just because you have a family lore that somebody said that you're a quarter Cherokee or your great 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 grandma was a Cherokee princess doesn't make you Native. The problem is we have a term, it's called the convenient Indian. Elizabeth Warren is a convenient Indian, and let me explain why. She said, and I'll go into a little bit more of Standing Rock, she said word zero about Standing Rock when Standing Rock was going down. She didn't say anything about it. And I'll go into more about her and people like her and when convenient Indians are caught doing something racist and they go, oh, I'm a quarter Cherokee or my, you know, I'm, I'm a quarter Cree or some shit like that, okay? So modern images, when people think of Indians, when thinking Native Americans, they're used to seeing this. Because this is modern. This is in your face every day, every Sunday, no matter where you live, okay? Look at that shit. It's awful. They even tried to, they tried to make this one over time, like, kind of, you know, be innocuous by smiling, and it's like, no, it's still the dehumanization and, and commodification of a race of people, okay? So we're always working against these images, and imagine if you're a kid in a school, and you're, and you're a Native American, and you're, let's say, the, in, in Colorado, they have the Lamar savages. And people will literally say, no, 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 I'm not calling Native Americans a savage. We're savages, my family, all of us, my, my niece there, she's a little savage. And you're like, how they interchange the language or they want to redefine the word savage. 
And then if you watch shit like Fox News, I hope you don't, but if you watch that, you will see them use the language savage about people, say, in the Middle East. And then they go, and then when it comes to indigenous people, or when it comes to mascots, the definition of savage changes for them. Now, it was in 2005 that the American Psychological Association called for the immediate retirement of Native American mascots because it was proven to harm the mental health and stability of kids. So whenever I go on any of these programs, be it Comedy Central, Fox, CNN, I tell them just take race out of it all together. Take sports out of it all together. What do we do as responsible adults when we know something is harming the mental health and stability of our kids? We do everything we can to get rid of it. We do everything we can to put it in the history books, but not when it comes to mascots, because you have this sports fanaticism. For some people, Sunday is Jesus and pigskin. And trying to tell them that this is harming the mental health and stability of, of kids, and not just Native American kids, but all kids, they say, you're being too PC. But that's not the case. If you want PC, just get an American history textbook. There's nothing more politically correct than a fucking American history textbook. Now here's the kick. People think that this is a native, like a cowboys and Indians thing, like white people and natives. No. Here's an African American patriarch. This was me. ESPN followed me around as I went to uh, FedEx Field, which is where the Washington football team plays. Note, I don't say the R word. It's a slur, so I'm not going to use it. It's a bad word. Here's an African American patriarch, and that's me in front of him. And you can kind of see, you know, we're kind of close quarters. You know, it's it's getting a little tense. Because I told him, I said, you know, would you be okay if it was black skins? And it was the caricature of your people. And people showed up in blackface. Would you be okay? And he said, no. And obvious. But then he took it a little further. He said to me, well, you know, I have a friend who's Hopi who doesn't have a problem with it. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> that would be the equivalent of me saying I have a black friend that's okay with this form of racism, so it should be okay, right? And so he got it at that point, but if you can see back here, one of his you know, family members you know, was like, he was getting close, and it got really tense. It was an awful day. If you go and you Google my name and you look up ESPN, you can find the images of all these people yelling at me, basically. You know, they're like, I'm ruining their party. And they, a lot of them were drunk. I think that's fucked up. That we have to literally go and tell people of color Latinos, African Americans, even LGBTQ, women, veterans, doesn't matter, disabled. The discrimination, the commodification, and the racism of indigenous people is the last form of racism that everybody gets behind. I can go down a column of people and have to tell a, a Latino that what they're doing is racist if they're wearing something with the Chiefs. I can go over here and go to somebody of the LGBTQ community who's a big fan of the Cleveland Indians. It doesn't matter. This is the last form of racism where everybody, creed, color, doesn't fucking matter, gets behind and tries to explain to a native why it's not racist. Let's get into journalism. There's NBC Latino. There's NBC Asian America. There's NBC Black. And then they totally go out and they just stop the whole demographic of race altogether and go straight to NBC out. Yet there's no NBC native. Why? I was a staff writer at NBC News in 2013. Now I write for the column section, which is kind of shitty. How I ended up being a columnist is because even though I'm telling the truth, it sounded more like opinion. That's fucked up. I'm, I mean, as journalists, that's what we do. We're supposed to tell the facts. Here are the facts. They're not pilgrims. They're invaders. They're not settlers. When we're talking about Thanksgiving, these are undocumented farm workers. And they're like, no, we can't, this is, that it goes in the face of the American narrative, and I'm like, so you're going to put me in the opinion section. Yeah, I think it'll work there. I think it'll work there. That's shitty. That's our job. For example, you can still read stories on NPR, CNN, NBC, anywhere, and they will say that we believe that the R word, the name of the Washington football team, is a racial slur, even though you can go to the dictionary and find the definition of the R word as a, as a racial slur but yet they still write, Native Americans believe. What is that? And that's modern journalism. So, who knows some of the statistics? It's not like there isn't shit to report on. Native Americans are more likely to be killed at the hands of police than any other demographic. Why don't you know that? 
Why doesn't the whole of America or the world know that? Because there is no NBC native. We don't have the same platform as other people. We're the smallest racial minority in our own ancestral land. Believe, check that shit out. Imagine there's like Italians were the smallest racial minority in Italy. The Irish were the smallest racial minority in Ireland. We're the smallest racial minority in our own land, and we're more likely to be killed by cops than any other demographic. That's Mahavis Good Blanket, shot seven times, once in the back of the head by Custer County Sheriffs. And they received the Medal of Valor, both cops. That's Alan Locke. Alan Locke was shot and killed on his stoop outside of his house one day after participating in a Native Lives Matter rally. And the names go on. Sarah Lee Cir Circle Bear, Paul Castaway, the names continue. Uh, Native American women are more likely to be uh, sexually assaulted, 2.5 times more likely to be sexually assaulted than any other demographic. What the hell did I do? Um, Native American women, 2.5 times more likely to be sexually assaulted. Who do you think is more likely to be incarcerated? At what rate? Any guesses? I mean, it's obvious I'm talking about natives. Well, that didn't go well. Okay. Well, really quickly, uh, natives are more likely 38%. We go, we're incarcerated at 38% the national average. Okay. Think of the images that I just showed you about mascots. Think of natives in these stereotypes. We're aggressive, right? We're warriors. We're savages. Where the R word, again, I'm not going to use it, but it's very hostile. So when Standing Rock happened, we weren't surprised that most people, when they approached us, thought that we were hostile, that we were savages, that we were engines, and that we were that stereotype that you see in TV and media playing even today. So they had dogs. They released dogs on us. They released, they, they fired water cannons and freezing temperatures. They threw people into dog kennels. This was all playing out at Standing Rock. Well, and, and it took us a long time to get mainstream news out there. Let me put that out there. They thought they knew the narrative already. The cowboys and Indians, protesters and cops, and Native Americans arguing about treaties. But when shit really hit the fan, when carnage was happening, when things blew up, when they were firing into crowds that had women and elderly and children, planes of them came out. Even though we told them, you know, this needs to happen now. You need to come out there. Maybe if you're there, it'll prevent it. They didn't show up, all of a sudden they're all on the plane, and I suddenly became a fixer, a stringer, and a reporter. But yeah, look at that image, that's modern. That was just a couple of years ago. And that's about to play out now in a lot of areas here in the United States, in Minnesota, there's, no, there's a line three, they have camps over there. Down in Louisiana, there's a number of camps right now where people are trying to protect our ancestral land and their water. I know I'm talking about uh, some scientists here, but even when we come with our narrative about protect the water, it seems that they're just like, nah, it's okay, it's Indian land, and that's what happened with the Dakota Access Pipeline, you guys know that? It was actually gonna go through a mostly white uh, community, and then they had voted in uh, Fargo to set it down by the Indians instead because they knew it was a threat to their water. Again, just a few statistics real quick. I know uh, there's some uncomfortable facts that didn't fit under the screen. I, I know that now that's uh, way blown out, but okay, yeah, Native Americans are incarcerated at a rate 38% higher than the national average. Um, police, uh, just take that in just for a second. We are at the top and the bottom of most social statistics, no matter what the hell you're talking about. Language. I got into journalism because I didn't like the language that they use. I wanted to not correct, and I didn't want to change it, I wanted to correct it. So I did this, I tweeted this out not that long ago, to help people along. Indians, no. American Indians, no, we're not from India. Native Americans can't be. We predate the Ameri America the nation. So what are you? We're Lakota, Dakota, Ojibwe, Osage, Raramuri, Tulela, Dene, and so many more. And every nation and tribe sans borders are indigenous. We're having a really hard time in the discussion, especially when people say, I'm Native American. I'm Native of America. And we're like, all right, sure, you are. That's fine, that's fine. But what do you call us, right? We prefer our tribe, we prefer our nation before we um, want to be called even Native American. Right now, there's a lot of us that just say Native. We're trying to move that one, indigenous and Native, because again, we do predate the idea of America. A Native American would be George Washington. A Native American would be, you know, Thomas Jefferson. 
John Adams. I'm not Native American. I'm not native to the idea or the nation of America. I'm Oglala. My title predates this country. And we keep forgetting, a lot of people like to use that language always. My family has always lived on this land. My family has always fought for this country. There are restaurants in Italy serving biscotti that are older than this country. And people forget about that part. You can follow me or email me if you guys have any questions. I don't want to go over too much time. I try to like cram a lot of stuff in there right away. But as a journalist, trying to talk about things from the American Psychological Association, how mental health and stability of kids is really important, and these Indian mascots are harming the mental health and stability of kids who are already uh, subject to substance abuse and, and depression, sometimes I don't get the platform. It's really hard. I have been in rooms with a number of other people of color, journalists, and they've gone around the table talking about their most successful story. Their most successful story. And when it came to me, I was like, I'm just happy to get one out. I'm just happy for them to even fucking give me the platform to talk about police brutality. That continues today. Or sexual assault in Indian country. Or the, the bail trap. Things like that. But natives were still canceled out of the conversation. And the shit part, too, is that some people want to claim to be Native American and take the space in the newsroom, then they don't pitch the stories. And we've had that problem so many times over. And that's why people like Elizabeth Warren bother us, because they are the convenient Indian. They come in when they need something. They come in when maybe they're busted being racist. Some people at sports events, red face, headdress, and then all of a sudden they're quarter black feet. That doesn't justify racist behavior. And only now do we see Elizabeth Warren actually coming and doing anything. But again, that was our problem. Where have you been? She said nothing about police brutality, said nothing about murder and missing indigenous women, said nothing about standing work, and all of a sudden, here she is. Well, that means she's going to run for office. We know she is. That's why she's doing it. And I think that's selfish, and I think that is the epitome of a convenient Indian. You show up now like you've always been there. She didn't say shit with standing rock. Um, I can go on like this, but I don't want to take up too much time. I think I already did. We're at 15 minutes and like 34 seconds. So anyway, thank you, and then we'll do a Q&A if you guys have some questions. Thank you.